Uh, Jesse here. Uh, I got a message from my buddy Cam this morning telling me that Alexi Leho from Children of Bowden passed away. And obviously that sucks because that guy is was way too young and really influential to many generations. Rest in peace, man. Alexi, you are amazing. Anyways, my buddy Cam asked me to teach him a little bit how to do arpeggios. And I just thought I'd make a video. Maybe see if anybody else wants to see how to maybe learn. And yeah, so I actually don't know any Children of Bowden songs. But I do know sweeps and I know arpeggios. And I'm gonna incorporate maybe a little bit about the arpeggios we do in scimitar and the little little things I do to incorporate these, these shapes and patterns and stuff. So I wanna show you uh, the first arpeggio sequence I learned. So it started off with an E minor, uh, D major, C major, and then B major. So those are the chords that are backing up these arpeggios. Obviously I'm in E standard, so if you're not in E standard, please pause the video and uh, tune up. We're gonna wanna start off with the E minor arpeggio, which is 19, 15, and the next string is 17, 16. The full five string is. So there's the E right there. So we're starting off with three string arpeggios because that's when you started getting into the sweep category. Uh, two strings are kind of just like, they're not really sweeps, let's be honest. So we want to get into three. My technique to get it started, to get these arpeggios started, is I actually go down, up, up, down. That's where you start doing the sweeps. Um, so down, up, up, down, down. Once I get the arpeggio going, I actually start pulling off. So here I just pick both. So the next arpeggio in the, in the sequence, you got uh, D major. You want to go two frets down and you want to just change the shape a little bit. So the shape of it is 17, 14, 15, 14. There's the full one. Um, so there's the D. There's also the D. Anyways, um, so yeah, we're gonna just do the same thing. Um, take that and make it C. So you're just move, taking this shape we just did, move it down by two frets, same thing. And then this time, B, you're just going down by one. So they all sound together like this. Yeah, so start off really slow, follow a metronome if you can. You just want to get like the picking patterns down. You don't want the strings to ring out. You know, just think of it as like a riff. But uh, you're kind of changing strings. You're going to have a lot of strings ring out at the beginning. It's going to suck. Um, and you want to practice um, doing it before you start getting that, you know, the muffy thing that you just like use the strings, you just put over. You know what, you really want to learn how to do it before you do that. But I want to show you at the end of the sequence, actually a way to spice it up a bit. And uh, it's actually called a diminished arpeggio. So those three arpeggios, uh, minor, major, and diminished, are the three most common. What you want to do is start off with this arpeggio. So you're doing minor, major, major, major. And then same shape. So you got uh, obviously 14. 11, 12, 11. So take that kind of same shape, except change the third and fourth note. The thing about diminished, the beautiful thing about diminished is that you can actually go up or down three frets and it'll be still in the same key and scale, whatever. Uh, so like, So that's how I kind of like to end that sequence, unless I'm going back into it, uh, whatever. Uh, but you can actually go. I ran out of frets, but obviously if you have one more fret, you can do that diminished arpeggio even further. And a cool party trick to do, actually, if you want, um, maybe start down here. Maybe just uh, do like the Yngwie Malmsteen thing where you go. So that's always fun. Might impress the ladies that way, give it a try. So starting off with that, you can actually do the three string arpeggios and once you get comfortable with that and when you start speeding up or whatever, or if you want to get even crazy and just start doing this little diddly that I like doing. Um, so 
see right there, I actually didn't I didn't go down. I actually went up and skipped back into the string. So sometimes I do that. Sometimes you will do that. But the more comfortable you get with it, the easier it'll become. That's a fun little thing you can do. Um, and you know, obviously going down that scale, which would be So yeah, the whole sequence together, once you get going, um, doing the three string, two string, and all three arpeggios kind of sounds something like this, so hopefully I don't screw up. Ooh, that was sloppy. But as you can see, it kind of has the children of Odom, you know, neoclassical feel to it. Um, so there's my video explaining that. But I want to add on to it and explain maybe a little bit about what Scimitar might do. For example, the arpeggio bit is from uh, Brethren of the Coast. Obviously I didn't write this, uh, George did. Shout out to George. But uh, you start off with the arpeggio, so obviously this is the same shape as E, but it's uh, in the key of A, A minor, so. So there's the same shape, but uh, you're in A at this time. So what he does is he starts off the, the sequence with like going. So it's not quite like a full like sweep, but it starts off as a sweep. Right there, so. In the same shape as you hear before, you're just going down the scale. Anyways, yeah, just take the arpeggio shapes, um, get to know them very well, and uh, you can start incorporating instead of just like going like like you want to like maybe incorporate like riffs into those. Marty Friedman, big influence of mine, always said that he hates doing the. But he probably did that at the start anyways, just to get familiar with it. And uh, then he started incorporating just like weird little runs that he does to get to places. That's, that's a way I actually go up an octave. Like an easy way to go up a minor, A minor octave is like. Um, just different like things you can do to put in your box of tricks that you can do and pull out of your freaking ass. The best thing to do also, I just want to throw in like even more tips, get a loop pedal or whatever. I actually owe a lot of my improv to an amp I used to have. It's just like a little Fender 15 watt and it had a 15 second loop that I would just like come up with a riff and I'd be like sick riff and I'd fucking put it in the loop pedal and then I would just like kind of improv over it and start trying to write like harmonies and stuff like that. I just did that for fucking hours a day. So I owe a lot to that that amp, and but if you can't find that amp, just get loop pedals, which is super fun. And then also, if you want to start doing that arpeggio thing, and then get, do the loop pedal thing and just go. So forth. Um, you can just uh, do that slow and then do it faster. You know, practice that way. Instead of, instead of a metronome, you can do both if you want. You can like have the metronome going, play the rhythm to the loop pedal. And it'll just sound funner to play along with it anyways. So there's my little introduction video to starting to sweep the picks or picking the sweeps, arpeggiating and I uh, appreciate it. Thank you Cam for, you know, sending me a message, wanting to learn, hopefully that helps. And uh, shout out to Alexi, rest in peace man. You are a god. And yeah, best of luck, much love. Good luck everybody out there and uh, until next time, peace.